It's easy to spot a guy when he's blatant and only wants to use you for sex, benefit from your financial situation, or use you for your connections. It's harder to come to terms to what's really going on when he's more subtle about it. So today, I'm going to reveal five hard to spot ways in which men use women so you can understand what's going on, assert your needs, and not be taken for a ride. The nature of any romantic connection always includes two opposing forces, the selfish and the selfless. You have wants, you have needs, you have desires, you have preferences, and also you have stubbornness inside of you. <laughs> we all do. And on the other side, you want to give, you want to uplift, you want to love, you want to express, you want to make somebody's life better. The problem becomes when this balance is off kilter. When you connect with a man and the selfishness versus selflessness is off kilter and he's going about it in ways that are not as easy to spot as a blatant dude who's just asking for your cash. The five signs I'm gonna share with you right now are not judgment of the guy being mean or machiavellically trying to use you. Sometimes the problem is that unconsciously using you is still hurtful. So the first sign that a guy might be using you emotionally is that he enjoys the connection with you there's good times, but he's not going deeper into wanting to know who you are. He's not asking those questions. He's not really searching deep for the truth of who you are, for your dreams, for your hopes, for your desires. And when that happens, even though you might have some good times with this guy, he either assumes that he knows who you are and he might be making a fatal mistake or, or several, or he doesn't care enough. The problem when he doesn't get a chance to fully understand who you are is that he might have different wants and needs but not able to express them in such a way that you can get them. Second sign is when a guy connects with you with a lot of intensity, a lot of sparks, a lot of passion, but no clarity as to what he wants, what he's going for, what his desires are in terms of a relationship. So the problem with intensity of that clarity is that if you feel a super strong connection with a guy, the way he looks at you, the way he connects with you, the way he hugs you, the things he says about you are feeling amazing, but he's not necessarily sharing with you where he wants to go in a relationship, what his life is about, what his intentions are, then you might confuse the intensity for we're going in the right direction. Also, when a guy is displaying intensity of that clarity, many times it is because he does not intend to go to a place of commitment. He doesn't want marriage. He may not want to go all the way, but talking about it, A, doesn't seem fun, and B, would disrupt the honeymoon that you're experiencing. So understand that when guys show up with a high degree of effusiveness and passion and there's chemistry and you feel like this guy gets me, if there's no conversation and clarity in terms of where you both are going, you might be taken for a ride. The third one is heaviness on the comfort and convenience. When the decisions he's making in terms of seeing you, whether it's the time to see you, the place to see you, how you connect are more based on comfort and he's playing it out as, ah, let's just do it this way. But when he, whenever he shares something, it's always tilted on his side of the fence. It's always what close to him, comfortable for him or convenience to him and not, not really going above and beyond to see you and to even ask you what would be best for you, then again, he might be someone who is of a mindset of, I want it my way and your way is not as important as mine. Before I go into steps number four and five, if you're a single woman watching this video and you've been attempting to find an amazing connection, you haven't been able to do it, I'd be willing to bet that you don't fully understand the root cause where you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 12 years of helping women in incredibly challenging situations, all walks of life, to attract their ideal life partners and put a quiz together you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. All you have to do if you want to get your answer is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll find a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds or so, you have two things. The answer to your question, why you're still single, and a report that's gonna share with you based on your specific challenge and blind spot, what is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want. Sign number four, that the guy is emotionally using you. And this one is tricky because when a guy shows up and he seems to be very vulnerable and very expressive and bearing his soul and sharing his heart, 
but that's mostly what he's doing. He's not necessarily going the other way and wanting to hear what pain keeps you up at night, what wakes you up in the morning, and he's just sharing and offloading his challenge and, and you kind of get into this collaborative space where you get a feeling of growth because he's sharing so much with you. He hasn't shared this with anyone else. You tell yourself or he tells you and you're feeling excited and almost feels like you're solving life with him. But the truth is, he's there, he has a deep need, he's, he's getting a free therapist and a free coach and not necessarily being reciprocal in his approach. When, whenever the balance of sharing and expressing is really heavy on his side, but rarely does he sit down and say, what bothers you? What makes you tick? What's hurting you? Like He doesn't take the time to do that because his needs are for you to help him solve his life. That's the definition of emotionally using you. And the worst part about that is in the moment, you might feel great. You might feel you're doing something amazing and that you're both growing in the same direction. The last one is, when a guy is punishing you in subtle ways without being clear about what his needs are. Emotionally using you is when, let's say, he doesn't get his way and then he uses silence to punish you, especially if you have more of an anxious type of attachment and he stops connecting with you. He becomes very cold. That would be another way of doing it. He's usually good morning, good night, beautiful. Then when you reply, when you call with him, he's cold, he's super distant but he doesn't have the courage to say, here's what's bothering me, can we fix this? The last way to punish you would be the dagger. The dagger is when he uses something you shared in confidence with him, brings it out into the open, maybe more people around, without the utmost care that that type of expression requires. When you share something that's deep in your heart and he just brings it out or uses it as a punishment for you because he's not getting his way, that's a challenging sign that he might be using you to fill up his needs in a way that's unhealthy. Now, what do we do with this? Me sharing that these are some ways in which guys show up doesn't mean that you should, a first sign of this, punch him <laughs> metaphorically in the face and run away. It does mean that if you're not getting what you want, that a boundary of self-worth is necessary. So let's say a guy is uh, intensity without clarity, for example, on that one. I really appreciate how you show up for me. I, I feel excited about the way you connect with me. I love the way you touch me. I love what you share. I would love to also have some time to connect about what we really want in our own lives in terms of relationship. Because for me, it's really important to not just get the feeling of connection and that chemistry, but know that there's compatibility in our visions. So you're not saying you're doing it wrong, you're saying, it, hey dude, like, can take a step back and share with me a relationship. What you're looking for in partnership, not necessarily with me, with anyone. Maybe the guy is punishing you in subtle ways and you say, you know what, it seems like whenever you get upset that you go a little silent or sometimes really silent. I understand you might be going through pain and for me it's really important that when something is bothering a person I'm connecting with, that they have uh, the decency to share with me, here's what's going on so we can figure out there's a solution. Would you be willing to, next time you feel upset, instead of going silent, let me know what's going on so we can work it out? Again, he might be able to do it, and if he does it, then you're experiencing something far superior in that relationship, or he might not be able or willing to do it, in which case, yeah, you need to walk away. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.